I've been trying to get this lens for so long. I don't know why it's out of stock. Let's see if it's worth like almost three times as much as this one. Because this one is awesome. Let's see if it's worth it. It's so cinematic because you get this amazing shallow depth of field. <laughs> the lights in the background are nice and big. You can get it to some extent with a 1.8, but the 1.4's bokeh, bokeh is much nicer. It's actually got one extra aperture ring, meaning that the bokeh is even rounder than on the 1.8. Both of these lenses will be amazing for indoor photography at night time. You can basically wake up one morning, use it the whole day. Your lenses, both of them, will work perfectly fine. One small thing to keep in mind is that both of the lenses are a little bit soft once you open them wide open. It's not the sharpest of images, but I have not been troubled by that. I have used even the 1.8 for client work and they have loved it. No one has said, it's a little bit soft. If you're just starting out with photography, I would prefer you to actually get the 1.8. And the reason for that is that getting sharp focus on the 1.4 is very difficult. It's even difficult for professionals because the depth of field is so shallow that you don't need more than like a few millimeters before the image actually is out of focus. I did notice that the 1.4 might be a little bit noisier when it comes to the autofocus. But one thing which is quite noisy with this one is not actually the autofocus itself, it's the aperture. No sound. And I would even say that the autofocus from video might be a little bit better on the 1.8 as it is newer. It just seems a little bit more fluid and smooth than the 1.4 that was basically made for photography. However, if you use the manual focus ring on the 1.4, it is much nicer and wider. While on the 1.8, it's very plasticky, it's next to the edge of the lens. It's not that easy to focus with. If you put these two lenses, not at the same time, if you put these two lenses on a crop sensor camera, like an APS-C, they will become an 80 millimeter, not 50 because of the crop factor of 1.6. Now I can see a big difference between the 1.4 and 1.8, but let's find out if an untrained eye can see the difference. Can you come down one moment? I'm gonna show her this picture. Which one do you prefer? The one on the left or the right? And which one do you think is more expensive? Uh, I prefer on the left. The left one? Oh no. Can you please look at the background, at the round things? Yeah. Okay, here you see it's a bit messy, so the right one would be better. I had to force her. So it depends a little bit on what you're filming or taking pictures of, if 1.4 is worth it or not. Both lenses have gotten like four and a half or almost five stars on both Amazon and B&H. So whatever you choose of the 1.8 or the 1.4, both are gonna satisfy you. Do you want to spend three times more on the 1.4? Hey, that's up to you. I mean, I love the cinematic look and I would say that it's like my first cinematic look lens that I have. It's not cinematic, but it's close enough. So a takeaway from this video, I think would be actually that you don't need to have 1.4 all the time. It's nice to have, but you might actually use it less than you think. If you want it, it's a great lens. This guy, as you know, I've done tons of videos. You can check them out here. I am gonna do a comparison between the 1.8, 1.4, 
and the 1.2. So if you want to watch that video, remember to subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because that helps us YouTubers. Now, I'm off to watch The Mandalorian because it's Friday. Thank <laughs> you.